Good day everyone. We are going to present to you the chapter 29 of this subject, Advanced Educational Psychology, the concept formation. My respect to our professor, Ma'am Nerisa and Beatrice. And I am Ma'am Sheila Ohitosis of the Gaon District. And my co-partner, co-reporter, Ma'am Catherine T. Peña, Florida of the Gaon District also. So, we are going to talk about concept and concept formation. So, what is concept? Concept are mental representation that express or describe by single word. It is a set of an ideas and thoughts and something conceived in the mind. A concept is a generalized idea about a class of object, attributes, occurrences, or processes that has been given a name. In other words, a concept is an idea expressed as a symbol or in words. A concept is generally accepted and understood collection of meaning and characteristics associated by certain events, objects, conditions, people, or behavior. What is concept formation? The process by which we discover the feature or features which are common to a large number of objects and associate this with a symbol which thereafter may be applied to other similar objects. It is also refers to a generalized idea about the objects, persons, and events. It is a common name given on the basis of similarities or commonness found in different objects, persons, and events. It is a mental disposition that helps in understanding the meaning of the objects or perceive earlier. In one sense, it is general mental image of the objects, persons, events, experience, or perceived earlier. For example, the child perceives a black cow at the first time and is told that it is a cow. He tries to form an idea about it. In the beginning, the idea is very particular in nature. Later on, when he perceives a white or red cow, he does not at once. He does not once call it a cow. He again makes an inquiry and comes to that these are cows. He tries to compare the particular mental image, the idea of the previously perceived cow, with the images he is having at present by perceiving white and red cows. In this way, he compares and contrasts the similarities or dissimilarities of his mental images related to all perceived cows. In spite of the differences in color, appearance, etc., they are found to possess so many common properties. So, the concept formation allows students to focus on what they find important and developing those ideas and create their own meaning. For this specific teaching model, we as teachers need to create the conditions under which an assignment or lesson falls under and give the students latitude in order to grasp the concept, concept we want them to learn. Concept formation fosters creativity in our students while giving them the opportunity to develop their own thinking and meaning. By differentiating sets of ideas, they can expand their knowledge. So next is the process of formation of concepts involves the four different elements. So these are observation, generalization, discrimination or differentiation, and abstraction. So this will be discussed by my co-partner, Ma'am Catherine Peña Florida. Good morning, this is Catherine T. Peña Florida. This is the continuation of Chapter 29. The process of formation of concepts 
involves four elements. Step one is observation. Step two, generalization. Step three, discrimination, differentiation. Step four, abstraction. First is observation. The first stage in the formation of concepts is the observation of an event, object, or an experience. This can also be called the stage of becoming aware. This can be either direct or indirect. The child can directly see a dog and become aware of it. On the other hand, he also hears stories about devils and giants from his parents and grandparents. Here, the awareness is indirect. Thus, all of us have some knowledge or awareness of primitive people, or at least we believe we have, even though most of us have not seen them. Generally, repeated experience provide the basis for the development of concepts. Experiences or learning in any form is the starting point of the process of concept formation. Our perceptions or imaginary experiences, formal or informal learning, provide opportunities for getting mental images of the objects, persons, or events. Next is generalization. Repeated experiences or observations of different objects result in a tendency to form a general idea. Thus, a child first sees one dog, then another dog, then a third, and so on, and begins to form the general idea of a dog. This is called the process of generalization. The process of generalization explains how the child acquires many concepts like the concepts of gender, shape, number, etc. Generalization Generalization is the process of extending the concept to include objects which possess a quality in common with or other objects but which have not been experienced as any of the objects in the abstracting process. After making such observation in the form of abstraction, for a number of times the child is able to generalize or form a general ideas about the common properties of some objects or events. On account of this generalization, he will develop a concept about these things or events. Next is analysis. Analysis is the systematic procedure applying techniques for analyze, analysis of academic content, which are similar in intent to those employed by task analysis in designing sequences for a job. The perceptions and experiences are now inwardly analyzed and re-experienced in the absence of the objects. This results in an appreciation of similarities and differences. This process by which the experience is analyzed in the absence of actual situations is known as abstraction. It is abstraction which actually transforms comparable and contrasting experiences into concepts. This ability to respond to concrete situations in the absence of the actual situations is known as abstract thinking ability. It can be seen that as the child grows older, the process of abstraction plays an increasingly important role in the, in the development of concepts. 
it is this process of abstraction which helps us to form ideas of the future and far off objects. There are types of concept formation. First, direct experience. Next, indirect experience. And last is faulty concepts. When we say direct experience, it is the first type of concept formation in which the learner develops concept through direct experience with the particular objects, persons, events. It is developed during from the early childhood onwards. For example, the concept about cow. Indirect experience. Indirect experience, here the learner develops concept through pictures, photos, and reading descriptions, hearing from others. Last is faulty concepts. The concepts or the general ideas we have about the objects, persons, or events are not always adequate and accurate. Small children have so many concepts that are quite erroneous and adequate. For example, one's anxiety over the crossing of his way by a cart or one's feeling of hatred towards the person belonging to other caste or religion is the result of faulty concepts. Faulty concepts should not be allowed to develop in children. Okay, that's all our report. Thank you and God bless everyone. Keep safe.